Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. Today we're going to be doing some soldering and that's why we've got a lot of equipment here and just off camera you can see my soldering iron. I'm just going to turn that on, let that warm up while we find our project here and to see what's in here. So I've got my little white piece of paper here to act as a bit of contrast because some of these components might be tricky to see. Now this kit is allegedly an electronic roulette wheel. Wow. Look at that. It's got all the components you should ever need apparently in this kit. You can see there's a few bits and pieces. Let's open out the instructions and have a look-see here. Oh, wonderful. Very, very simple. They're not even instructions really. It's kind of a component list and um, a few bits and bobs here and I'm just trying to, you've got a few resistors. So we're gonna to have to try to decode some of the colors on the resistors, so that's gonna be fun. Um, R1, R2, see all these 470K, so, oh, you can't see those, there you go, <laughs> sorry. Uh, all the resistors, all the values, all the bits and pieces. And uh, here's the actual circuit. So it looks like this is a, a 555 timer. And I believe this might be some sort of decade counter. So we push the button and it's going to basically kick off the 555 timer. That'll start going and then I'm guessing there's probably an electrolytic somewhere. Yes, there is. Um, that's going to knock it all off. Uh, there we go. It's there, isn't it? The 22 microfarads. Uh, yeah. Okay, and there's another letter right there. So anyway, it's a decade counter. It's going to spin it round and then it's going to do a relay thing. We don't really care about that, do we? Because we're here to learn how to solder and all those good things. So that's the big IC. goes that way. And that's the small IC. <laughs> that's the 555 timer. So that's a sort of an actual Texas Instruments chip from the look of it. If you can quite see it. But there you go. See, there's a Texas Instruments Lego on there. So if we put these uh, chip holders in there, we know we can get those chips in and we know which way around. So you see the, the PCB is more or less the instructions because it's everything's actually printed on here. So we might as well just crack on really. Right, gonna start with this big boy. So line up the holes. You can see I'm just lining up the pins to the holes and I'm giving them a wiggle because they are a little bit bent. There you go. So just to show you what to do, I'm not going to, uh, if you have some flux, use it, but I don't have any flux on me at the moment. So I'm just gonna take my soldering iron. I've got it quite hot and I've not cleaned it for a while. So I'm gonna use some of this just solder tip cleaner, which is just a horrible, nasty flux and then use this sort of weird sink Brillo pad thing to clean it. Get them on eBay, they don't cost anything. They're obviously retasked ashtrays. And what I like to do is just get your first pin on. So that's now christened the board. The very first pin of the board has been laid. And you can have a look. You can see that all lines up nicely and then go straight for the opposite on the other end. Okay, we can zoom in, we can have a look. So I've gone one on there and one on the opposite. So now that holder is insecure, it looks pretty good. Looks like it could just go down a touch more. So I'm gonna have a go at that. In fact, look, I've made a mistake. I've got one pin bent. So I need to actually extract this. So I'm gonna pop that out that way. Again, heat it, pulling the pin out. If you look at there, I've got a nasty bent pin. More care needed. So I don't, I've never really played a uh, roulette in real life. I'm guessing it's, uh, it, we all know it's a gambling game and um, I'm sure the casinos make a lot of money on it. So I didn't use a solder sucker there, I just uh, cleaned it with the tip of the solder and I, you know, you, if you've got a solder sucker or some solder braid, that's the best way of doing it. I've been uh, doing these so long now that 
you sort of devise a way of flicking solder around uh, the uh, PCBs when you're constructing them. God, these cheap, cheap and nasty um, IC holders are just pain. If you wanted to, you could put the IC straight on uh, your PCB. I wouldn't advise it though. If you've, got, if you've got the holder, use it. Right, so now we're back in business. So once you've got your corners done, you can really just sit there and just get all those other ones nicely done like that. See, nice and quick. Don't breathe in the fumes, by the way especially if you're like me and you're using some old leaded solder because it could be unhealthy for you. I'm not sure how unhealthy exactly because there's a hell of a lot of people in the electronics industry who've been using leaded solder for many years and have no ill health from it. And that's what you should end up with. See, nicely soldered and it's actually nice nicely trimmed so it's sort of the right height you don't really have to get in there with your side cutters and continue five 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 time exactly the same process so I'm going to try a different trick here now it's so another way you can do it if you want to uh, practice this at home just uh, take a blob of solder there and you see how I'm just touching it on the tip, tip? I want to get a little blob to um, here onto the tip. So it's, there's a drip now on the end of the soldering iron. And I'm just going to plop that on the end there, see? Ooh. Now that's kind of, well, in fact, it is holding that IC uh, carrier in there. So I can just go and finish off this socket. Now my soldering iron's way too high. So if your soldering iron's way too high, like mine, you'll notice it's oxidizing on the tip. I've got it set to 480, which is a little bit hot. I'm gonna bring it down to 400. Let's see how we fare with that. In fact, it's at 375. If you don't have a temperature setting on your soldering iron, then just, uh, you've got no choice. Just use it as it is, not a big deal. Right. Second piece in. Brilliant. So we could put these chips in now, but actually, meh. I'm going to put these chips aside. Let's just, we don't want to damage those. Let's go for something easy, shall we? The switch. Now, a switch could go in either way, really. In fact, the pins, though, look at the way the pins are. If you're really adamant about it you could force that in the wrong way so I'm gonna not force it in the wrong way there we go and that's good look it actually grips itself it's convenient for us now I'm gonna admit something to you I don't know how to read resistors and I always forget which way round LEDs go so there's no shame in that I'm a surface mount kind of a guy, so I tend to I tend to have values written on things. So you can see when you look at an LED, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert. So you've got an anode and a cathode, and you'll see there's always a big side and a little side. And clearly they relate to that. And there's always a long leg and a little leg. So we're going to actually have a quick look on the phone here because it's a really good resource if you've got one. And we're gonna to try to figure out which way round an LED goes. So I'm gonna type in LED direction. And then we're gonna click that. So the internet's your, a really valuable resource. Look, you've got everything you need there. So there's the LED. The little leg is the cathode, which is the minus. And the minus is the bit which has the sort of line through it, which almost looks like a minus sign. Oh, look, a little spider. Right, so if we look at our PCB, you can see there's actually the minus sign written on all of these. So our little leg is going to go in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go straight through little leg on all of these, following the instructions. I'm going to post instructions to where I got this kit down below. It 
This guy actually came really quickly as well. I'm surprised. It came. It was a, chi a Chinese kit, and it, it actually arrived, I think, within a week. There we go. Almost there. Final one. So just to show you again. See the minus sign there? And the little leg. suppose you could also say short leg. So how am I going to flip this around now to solder it? So I'm going to take something, uh, maybe that shouldn't be used like this, like my phone. So my phone, uh, I'm holding them all in there with uh, just my phone perched on it and I can see some of them already gone a bit wobbly, be careful. And I'll just show you a trick. What I like to do, and it's the same with welding really, you sort of just do a tack a tack solder so just on each leg one of the legs small or large it doesn't matter go round and put a little blob of solder just to hold it in place and this holds it in place loosely and I'll show you why you want to do that because it makes your life absolutely a lot easier right so that's all of them done so now you can see oh all of them apart from one I didn't do properly hang on just going to post that through. There we go, we'll just touch that one up. Now, you'll notice that they're all captive now, but they're not all straight. They're all a bit wonk. They're all a bit on the wonk, mate. So what I do, get your finger, put it on the end of the LED and then just touch that blob of solder that you had on the shaft. Do you see how that LED just sat down? Let's try it again, ready? And you can just go around really quickly. That one's good. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going around, touching the LED's blob of solder that we tacked it on with. And it doesn't take any time at all. So once they're all sitting firm, you know, and flat, there we, go. we can just get on to the next stage right so there we go so that's that one that's the final one so remember these are all kind of loosely tapped that wasn't a good bit of solder there so you've got an option now you can either cut the legs with your side cutters and these are side cutters now or you can just you can solder them and cut them later so that's entirely up to you I I think I kind of generally prefer to side cut them first but I'm not you know I'm not really that bothered about it so I'm just going to solder them what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder the non-tacked leg and give it a really good proper solder, which is what's going on now. Then I'm going to cut them and then I'm going to cut the tacked leg and then just retouch it. So that way I get to retouch the tacked leg without all this, this excess pinage in my way. So just take your side cutters and you can see here these are a bit mauled. I've been abusing these. so. Oh no, they're really bad actually. These are a ruined pair of side cutters. Okay, I can't use those. One moment. If you've got side cutters, cherish them. The reason these ones are ruined is because I tried to use them to strip wire the other day. In fact, it's on one of my videos. Don't do it. Okay, so this is the difference. See, this is a good pair got two pins there ready see how it just nips straight through them this is the bad pair <clears throat> didn't do anything it just sort of bent them up a bit and that's because it's got chunks taken out of its jaws so I'll just get through all of these bang 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 watch your eyes I have to admit over the years I've never worn safety glasses doing this but I don't advise you do you can actually kind of direct their fire into uh, somewhere I can see mine are landing on a mains plug socket and trying to fall in all the bits. There we go. Get the legs out of the way, but don't chuck them away. Legs are really useful because you never know when you need to make a jumper or a link for something. Let's see if we can find those tack legs now. There we are. And if you're a stickler for uh, finessing, you can go over those cut 
ends as well. You know, those other um, pins that you've soldered. And you'll get it real, real pretty, real nice. Done, 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 done. So that's all our LEDs in place. Lovely and firm. What else? A couple of electrolytics. Again, you know, no shame in it. If you don't know, and I often don't know things, electrolytic, I'm using my phone, E-L-E-C-T-R-O-L-Y-T. -E -E That's electrolytic capacitor, by the way. It means it's it's got a positive and a negative. So it has to go in the wrong way. So you really want to make sure you go on your Google or whatever. And I'm going to type in electrolytic capacitor symbol. There we go. <laughs> yes. So you can see the symbol here, you've got this circle and it's half clear and then half shaded. So we're trying to look here to remind ourselves what the symbol actually means on the PCB. So this is the schematic symbol coming up in Google. Let's try PCB, shall we? Gosh, I can't believe I'm looking this up because I really did used to design a lot of things. Okay, so here, you can see here, the shaded portion, it appears to be the negative. And the negative on one of these is marked by a strip. So you'll see, see that white band as I rotate it? Black, 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 white, that's the minus. Let's take another one. See, black, 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 and there's a minus sign right there showing you which leg is the minus. So the minus goes onto the shaded part. There's two here, there's a 100 uh, microfarad, and a 47 microfarad, so let's look at these and see which is which. So you can read these on these, fortunately. And what I can read on here is this one is a 100 microfarad. And rather alarmingly, so I'm going to see the minus sign there, I'm going to put that there. It's also got a short leg actually on the minus, just like the LEDs, that's useful. So that's popped in there. Now I'm looking at the other one, which has 47 microfarads. However, I'm not convinced because this electrolytic says 22, so I don't know if there's a substitution going on here. C3 is 103, see 103 right there, and that's probably picofarad, so what's this one? You can hardly read it. But there is no more capacitors, so this is probably the capacitor for here. Do you see them like that? That's a little teeny, teeny one. I'm just going to have to assume there's a substitution in there, so that's probably what we need. So again, same trick. Now it's a bit fiddly. I'm trying to do all three at once, and they're all different sizes, but you can see the six legs up there. I'm going to just put some solder on the end of my soldering iron. So I've got a little blob right on the end of the soldering iron. I'm just going to drop that tack bead right in there. There we go. One. Two. Whoa, that's a sort of a third, but we'll put a bit more. There we go. And we're going to check them. So the two electro the, uh, the ceramic is fine, but the two electrolytics aren't quite sitting right. So I'm just going to make sure by putting my finger on them, just like the LED, get them home. There they go. They jumped right into place. You might have heard that. Side cutters again, trim them off to. I'll tell you what. It's, you don't really need to worry about a sort of millimetre um, accuracy here. Just trim them off to the top of the solder blob that you've already used and that'll be the perfect height. That's another benefit of the uh, tack blob. I didn't really have ever considered that, but yeah, use the tack blob as a guide. Just retouching them up again. There we go. We're almost there. <sighs> so we've got a transistor in here. In fact, I think it's a transistor. Let's have a look at our diagram. Yes, we have. It's a Q1. It's a 9104 transistor, and that's easy to place because you'd really have trouble putting it in the wrong way around because you can see from the top, transistors are shaped like a letter D. Let's put that right in there. Oh, the whole spacing's not great. Little bit of a uh, stretch here. You can see the legs are actually stretching apart. There's a bit of a splay going on because they're 
don't really want to sit in there, but that's fine because watch, when I turn it upside down, it won't want to fall out either. And there we go. What's left guys? Just three resistors, or four, there's four resistors here. So we know there's two of one particular value because I can see the colors on here and we'll have a investigate the colors in a moment. So there's two 470Ks, which are clearly that one, R1 and R3, and then R2 and R4. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how these work and I'm only gonna tell you a little bit because I can never remember. I know how they work, but I uh, certainly can't tell you exactly. So if you go to resistor the calculator, and again, I'm, a, I'm accustomed to surface mount resistors and you get those in a nice book and they actually show you exactly what things mean. So this is a website. This happens to be the Digi DigiKey website. So have a look at your resistor of choice here. So you might just be able to make that out, but from left to right, you've got red, red, brown, and then gold. And gold is actually the tolerance. So if I go to my resistor calculator, which I've just got open here, so I'm going to go red, red, brain, gold. It says this one is a 220 ohm. And if we look at our instructions, R4 is a 220 ohm. So let's just go ahead and pop this in the right hole before we forget. On our PCB, we have a nice R4 sized hole. And I'm just going to bend the legs of, the, oh, they're really thin. <laughs> These are the thinnest legs I've ever seen. So just bend them in like that. If you're uh, a bit more skilled than me, you could bend them in a little bit tighter than that. And you can see there, see that's nice sitting in there. Do the same trick, flip it over, get your blob on there and do your tack. Resistor's still sitting nicely. I'm just gonna go straight ahead and tack the other leg because they're a bit flimsy. You don't wanna waste time trying to cut them because if you cut it first, chances are it's gonna fall out. Let's trim that back. And let's see what's left. So we need another three resistors and two of them we've got the same here. So these two are the 470. So we've got R1 and R3. Again, just fold those legs back. R1. Come on, come on, come on. R1 and R3. If you look at some old electronics which use through hole, just because you don't really get through hole and stuff these days, you will find some really interesting ways people put resistors in because sometimes they put them in on their end. So if you look in something like a ZX Spectrum or a ZX Spectrum if you're in the United States, you'll find that little trick. And that was probably a space saving trick back in the day Oops, that's not a very good tack, it almost fell out. That was a space saving trick back in the day to uh, so you could chuck more resistors on, but it would have been quite fiddly, but then everything would have been manually assembled. Okay, so that's that one. There we go, there we go. Let's get in here, voiding these dingly dangly pins. Right, all the leads are gone. Zap that off. One more resistor. Oh yeah, by the way, resistors don't really have a direction. In fact, they definitely don't. So they don't really matter which way you pop them in. Ceramic capacitors, again, don't generally care. Electrolytics do, LEDs do, and diodes do. We don't have any diodes on here. So you don't have to worry about those. They might be... Oh, this one's being a bit fiddly. There we go, we got our tack on at last. So I can see looking at the bottom of this PCB, there's uh, still some unpopulated things here. So let's hope we've got everything. Uh, just the battery. Look what the actual extra set of holes is. These are just in the uh, this sort of tracking here. I wonder if this is a ground. It doesn't look like it's a ground because it's not attached to this ground plane. 
or the actual battery ground. Who knows why these two holes exist? If you know, let me know. So, okay, so we've got these uh, battery snap here. Well, I'm just gonna do tin the ends. They do look like they might be pre-tinned, but not very well. There we go. It's certainly not gonna be the right length. Yeah. It's a very close call on this one, guys. So I'm going to just do the same trick of the blob of soldering on the. Actually, I'm going to clean the soldering iron. Let's get that blob on the end. This is going to be fiddly because you don't want to hold your soldering iron on the ends of wires too long because the insulation will melt. Uh, oh gosh, 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 gosh! Just about got it. Really, that's not very good at all. I'm going to come back to that uh, positive connection in a moment and give it a more positive soldering experience. Right, positive. Let's have another go at you. Let's have another go. There we go. Brilliant. So let's clear our work area because we don't want any shorts. Check the PCB. It all looks pretty good. If you've got a brush and I've got my gentleman's suit brush here. There we go, all the bits are nice and clean. I do like to say there we go a lot. I don't know when I started doing that. It's probably one of my more annoying traits. Battery in, battery in. It's gonna knock my soldering iron off because uh, I might discover that it's buzzing through the whole video and you can't actually hear what I say. Oh, we didn't put our ICs in. How foolish of me. Okay, the two ICs. Now, as with ICs, you shouldn't touch the pins because static electricity can destroy them. So if you have any issues with static and you're next to a radiator like I am, just touch the radiator before you touch these things and make sure you're static free. That's good enough. I've been handling them for so long, I really can't remember a time that I've been worried about static. So this this nor doesn't want to fit into the holder. So what you do is just push them on the edge of your workbench slightly. And that not only straightens the pins, it kind of aligns them and brings them in a bit. So they're a little splayed to start with. And that goes in, there we go. And we've got our 555 timer, which is really ancient. I would normally just use a microcontroller for a project like this and actually program it to do the roulette things. But so this is this is definitely an old school way of doing it. But it's ironically, it's you know you think it's cheap because it may be using simpler components, but maybe these are actually more expensive because a pick, you know, one of these little picks on these things costs nothing. But then you've got to program them, so you've got assembly costs there. Right, LED on. Well, hey, look at that. Does it? Yeah, does it stop? Does it stop? Does it stop? So what I suspect is happening, and you know, I'm no great analog electronics guy, more of a digital electronics guy. What's happening? I'm gonna give you the really, really high level version. You're pushing the button, and this is kicking off this uh, timer circuit. And what's happening as the, uh, the, I don't know how these actual work, the 555 timers, but they kind of oscillate. So they're oscillating and it's, they're controlled kind of, the frequency of the oscillation is controlled probably by this resistor and this electrolytic capacitor C2. And what's happening as it's spinning, I'm just looking at this here to see what you're doing. As it's spinning, this capacitor is either charging or discharging, and have to you know, really look at it to figure out what's doing. But as it's discharging, it's changing the oscillation frequency. So you'll see this should slow down a little bit. See, it slows down a little bit, and then it just stops. So this stops oscillating because this capacitor has reached either it's fully charged or fully depleted, one way or the other. We could, we could, yeah. we could work that out. Where's our circuit? So this is the positive rail here pushing that. You're pushing it on the cuts coming in, putting a little bit on the base. So that's putting positive. So I think, I think you're charging this capacitor and then it's depleting. Either way, it doesn't matter. And then it's going into this chip and this is a decade counter. So every time it gets a pulse, it actually moves on to the next thing. So when you click it, three becomes uh, high. Let's say for example, this pin three here, 
and when you click it next the next one along will just become high and this will become low and it's just moving through it's like a register moving through so every time this sends a pulse it clicks one of these so while this is going this is going through like this yeah and then once this is basically depleted it will have slowed down slow down and just stop on one and then that's what you're seeing right now i think it's uh, yeah it's quite a neat circuit quite simple I hope my explanation's correct. It's certainly my interpretation of them. <laughs> Don't quote me in your college lecture or anything like that. And that's been a lot of fun. I hope that's of some use to you. Feel free to leave comments down below if you're playing at home. Give me some details on any 555 or this U2CD4017. And, oh, what's this bit here? Mm. <laughs> 80, I just noticed something that just sort of caught my eye because it says eight pick. 8, 16, I don't, I think that might be PIC or 8 pin IC, ah, uh, 16, because we, you know, with these, these sorts of chip, these microcontrollers are called picked on here, they're made by Arizona Microchip, funny. Right, yeah, please feel free to subscribe, leave comments down below, and as ever, thank you for watching.